Hey, good morning, Lincoln Avenue students. I hope you're doing well on another fantastic Sunday. You know, I just wanted to talk to you for just a moment about the world that we live in and the crazy place that it is, right? We live in a broken world that faces a lot of suffering, a lot of pain, a lot of injustice, a lot of difficulty. And sometimes we can find ourselves in a place where we're suffering, whether it is from a small thing that was maybe an inconvenience that kind of hurt us and caused us to suffer, or from something big like this, like sickness or like the death of a family member or something uh, even more tragic and difficult. We look around the world and we see suffering and we see pain and sometimes that touches our own lives. And the reality is that knowing Jesus doesn't insulate us from pain and from suffering. But because we know Jesus, we do have a real hope. A, a, a hope that is tangible, something that is real, that we can trust in and that can help us to endure suffering, endure the pain and difficulty that we see around us and the pain in our own lives. And so this morning, as we continue our Speak Hope series, we're going to be looking at another passage in First Peter where we see how the hope that we have in Christ can help us to endure suffering. So let's do that. Let's take a look at these verses in First Peter and dive into our next session in our Speak Hope series. So the first thing that we want to see in these verses out of 1 Peter today is that our hope in Christ should and can help us to do good even in the midst of suffering. Take a look at these verses in 1 Peter chapter 3. Finally, all of you be like-minded and sympathetic. Love one another and be compassionate and humble, not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, give a blessing since you were called for this so that you may inherit a blessing. For the one who wants to love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. And let him turn away from evil and do what is good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do what is evil. So what Peter sets up here in these verses is this reality where we are going to face difficult circumstances, right? We are going to have people who as Peter would say, commit evil against us, right? They, they do evil things, they do wicked things, they, they hurt us, and um, they, they do things to um, um, cause injustice, to cause suffering. Um, and, you know, very often the most common way that we see other people working against us is small things, right? Day-to-day -day things, people saying things to us, insulting us, like Peter would say, just, just small things to just kind of... Um, get under our skin and, and cause division, cause distress in our lives. And we can respond in one of two ways, right? We can return insult for insult, as Peter would say, and lash back at those kinds of people and give them what, they, what we think they deserve and repay evil for evil. Um, and that goes for big stuff too, right? The big injustices, big things that we see uh, happening in, in the world and, in, and in, even in our own lives. We could choose to repay evil for evil and insult for insult, but that is not the path of hope. That's not the path of reconciliation that Peter would draw out here. He, so he says, even when you face difficulty, even when you're insulted, even when you, know, you face these, these, these moments in your life where you suffer, the response should be to continue doing what is good. So the right path is one of truth and one of peace. And the promise that Peter has here is that God will help us to endure that, right? He hears the prayer of the righteous, the one who does what is right, who walks the right paths, and he helps them. He gives them assistance. And we can have that hope that even though we face difficult people, even though we face difficult circumstances, we can endure and continue doing good for the name of Jesus by the help that God gives us, by the promise that, that he will help us, he will help us to endure. So our hope in Christ can and should help us to do good even in the midst of suffering. So the second thing we see about how our hope in Christ can help us to endure suffering is that our hope in Christ, or because of our hope in Christ, we should not fear even in the middle of suffering, even for doing what is right. Take a look at these verses. Who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? 
But even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated. So basically what Peter is setting up here is that even in the middle of suffering, even in the middle of being being heaped on with insults and um, and disrespect and, and pain and suffering, we should do what is right instead. We should continue to be obedient to God, continue to walk the, the, the righteous path and follow him obediently. But then he goes into these verses and basically says that you may then suffer for doing what is right. So even though you're in the middle of difficulty and you choose what to do, you choose the right thing to do, you may still face suffering and, and difficulty because of doing the right thing. It is not popular to do what God asks us to do a lot of times, and we see that so vividly in our culture today. It is not popular for Christians to follow the Lord and to be biblical and to, and to uphold the things of the Lord and to walk uh, the right paths. And you've probably experienced that as middle school and high school students when your friends want you to do something that you know the Lord wouldn't want you to do and, in, and you know that you, you shouldn't do those things, but you see the pressure from your friends and, and from the people around you to go ahead and do that. And then when you don't, you suffer for that, right, in a sense, right? They, they might mock you, they might insult you, they might make fun of you. And so even in that small way, you're doing what's happening here in, in 1 Peter, you are suffering for doing the right thing. But Peter says that we shouldn't be afraid, right? We are blessed when we suffer for righteousness sake. The Bible talks elsewhere about us being, uh, us being able to share in the sufferings of Christ and that being an amazing, wonderful thing. Now, most of us are not going to share in the sufferings of Christ in the sense that the Bible talks about it because it's talking about people who are martyred for their faith, who are killed for being Christians, and they're sharing in the, in the physical suffering of Christ. But in a way, we are still suffering with Christ when people hate us for doing the right thing. Jesus said, they will hate you because they first hated him or first hated me. That's what he says. And so we are going to suffer when we do righteousness, when we, when we walk alongside God and are obedient to him. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't do it, right? We should not be afraid. And Peter goes on to say that we shouldn't be afraid or be intimidated because we should consider Christ as holy so remember that our hope in Christ gives us the opportunity, gives us the ability to not have fear, even in the midst of suffering or the midst of, of difficulty. So the last thing that we need to see about our hope in Christ and how it helps us to endure suffering is that we need to be ready to share our hope with others. Look at these last few verses from 1 Peter chapter 3. But in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who disparage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. So the first thing that Peter says is connected to the verse before it, right? So he says, don't be afraid, don't be intimidated, but instead regard Christ as holy. See, if we're going to make it through suffering, if we're going to do the right thing, even in the midst of mockery and insults from others, we need to remember who it is that we serve and who we follow. Sometimes we're tempted to just think of Jesus as just our friend, and he is our friend. He calls us his friends, and he is um, our, our brother, and, and, and God is our father, and, and there's these close family relationships. But we also need to remember that Jesus is God, and he's the creator of the universe, and he is um, all, all powerful and holy and righteous, and that if it wasn't because of his blood and his sacrifice on the cross, we would have no right to stand before him. We deserve the punishment that God gives us because of how holy and righteous he is and how we don't match up to that standard. But because of Jesus, because of what he's done and how glorious that is, we can stand before him and he can call us his friends. So we need to remember that we don't just follow some man. We don't just follow some other religious leader. We follow the God of heaven who came to earth, became a man, and died for our sins. And that fact will help us to go ahead and... and and face suffering with, uh, with courage and with ability. And then Peter goes on to say that we need to be ready to give a defense for the hope that is within us. And ultimately, he's talking about sharing the gospel, right, and, and telling people about Jesus. Because here's what happens in the middle of suffering. 
Suffering is one of the biggest ways that we can be a witness for Jesus because everybody knows what it means to suffer. Everybody knows or at some point will know what it means to lose someone they love or what it means to, to watch someone suffer or, or what it means to look around the world and just watch the news for five minutes. And so Christians have a unique opportunity in the middle of suffering, in the middle of difficulty, to continue to have hope because we know that ultimately Jesus has made an end of suffering on the cross and, and with his death and resurrection and that he is coming back one day in righteousness, riding on the clouds, and he will wipe away every tear and everything will be made right. And so we know that this suffering is temporary. Everything that we go through here on this earth is just temporary. And so we can have hope, we can have joy in the middle of the most difficult times in our life or the most difficult situations in our world. And the world, the people in the world will look at us and say, how can you have such hope? How can you still be joyful in the middle of all of this? And the answer is Jesus. And so Peter says, be ready to give a defense. If you are going to have this hope, but then you be ready to tell people about it. But do so, he says, in gentleness and, and, and kindness. And ultimately, he goes on a little further. And, uh, and I could kind of summarize those last couple verses just by saying, walk it or zip it, right? If you're going to claim to have this hope in Christ and this relationship with God, then you need to walk the walk and talk the talk, right? You need to do what is right. You need to follow the Lord and continue to do these things and follow him. So our hope in Christ ultimately should motivate us and enable us to do what is good. It should cause us to live without fear, and then we should be ready, because of the hope that we have, to share that hope with others. Because we know this world is lost and dying and needs the hope of Jesus Christ and a relationship with him. So remember this week as you go out, and no matter what you face this week, no matter what difficulty you encounter or what suffering you're going through right now, Remember that you have hope in Christ that is able to help you endure the small things, the big things, the huge things, and the things that you think you will never get through. Jesus is right there with you. He has given you hope. He's given you the promise that he will be with you and he will help you to endure as long as you continue to follow him and be obedient to him. And it's not going to be easy. It's not always easy, right? God doesn't promise us an easy life. He doesn't promise us a quick and easy end to suffering, but he does promise us that he never leaves us. He never forsakes us. And he is our good shepherd who will lead us to green pastures and cause us to lie down by still waters. So remember the hope you have in Jesus in the midst of whatever you're going through this week.